Hey everybody, um, here to do part two on the 3406. This is actually a 3406C fuel system rebuild. Uh, like I say, this will be part two. Part one was yesterday. Uh, a few things that I failed to talk about yesterday was the flyweights and races. I'll get into that right now. Let me turn the camera around. Okay, something I failed to mention is the flyweights and races. This is a this is a high wear item right here. These are the the races. The bearing is in the middle, and the flyweights right against a, another race, which is on the bottom side. And all this is held on by a clip. Uh, if you can see it, let me see if I can get down under here. There's a clip right there, a little small wire clip, something similar to that that was on the pack drive yesterday. Okay, if you have a lot of miles on a 34.6 in a truck and you develop at an idle, an uneven idle, a, I like to call it searching, hunting, for idle and idle up, idle down, all over the place. More than likely, the races and the flyweights are war bad, and they need need attention ASAP. Uh, also, when I was talking about these flipping out all the way, but when they, the carriers didn't have these tits sticking on them, also, when these would flip out all the way, it would bust the inner housing the governor housing, which we'll get into that more. But uh, I got some Loctite from a boat, so I'm gonna make sure I remove any oil, any debris out of the boat hose of the cam. Then that will boat into place and the cam <clears throat> will be secured in there. So we'll probably, from that point, we'll probably clean the lifters up, drop the lifters in, install the rack, and uh, start putting pumps in, which is very critical, and uh, I will have to go over that thoroughly with y'all. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I lock tight at them. The boats drop in. Let me you don't want them soaking with Loctite because I have seen the Loctite set up on the side of the flyweights and cause the flyweights to hang and cause it to do all kinds of craziness when you start it. So, all right, let me put this in place. I like to hold out, keep pressure on this while I start my bolts because we don't want that little dowel in the back side that goes through the uh, tack drive shaft. We don't want it to fall out. <clears throat> I've only got one run up. I'll have to get something to hold the front to keep it from turning while I put the final torque on it. Uh, just in case you don't know, it takes a quarter inch 12 point socket to fit these. You'll want to kind of roll these up out of the way as you tighten these so that your socket does not bind against these and cause any damage to your flyweights. That's the gist of that. Okay. Uh, a lot of times to turn this, especially when you get the pumps in, it's kind of tough to turn the pump once you get the barrels in because of spring pressure. 
you know, you can take two crescent wrenches or you can take a pipe wrench turned sideways. You just don't want to damage these helical gears, okay? Now, what I am, what I have chose to do for the video is I'm gonna go ahead and pin it, which will be on number one, top center. Well, it'll be number one cylinder. So I am looking for the pin. Oh, there it is. Can you all see that? See the groove? Now, there is a special timing pin. It is, I'm sure, a certain size. There is a part number, but Lord my eyes, I can't see that. Let's see if you all can see it. You can get these a lot of different places, but anyway, that's what that's for. So you put this right here. This is to pin this on number one cylinder, which needs to be done before it goes on anyway. So I'm going to hold pressure on it with my finger. Oh, and there it is. Now that will lock that cam from turning so that I can tighten these 12 point bolts to their final torque. Okay, I cleaned up and inspected this lifter. This roller rides on the cam. This actually lifts and lowers the individual barrels, the pumps, individual pumps in this fuel system. I check for scoring, I check the roller condition for pitting, spalding, excessive play. It's got a groove here, so you can't get it in wrong. It also has a little, if you would call it a dowel or a tip that sticks out to make sure that the uh, fuel pumps are go in line. So I will lubricate that and drop it in. This will be number six. It will go in this bore right here. I will make sure that it rides freely and continue on with five, four, three, two, and one. Then we'll get into the more detailed stuff with uh, pinning the rack. Oh, yeah. Let me get my light out. Let me go with me. But I don't know if you can see it move in there. Da -da. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so the dowel keeps this in line as it goes up and down. The pump sits down in here and the rack passes across. These lifters will not come out with the rack in, nor will the lifters go in with the rack in. Lifter rack individual barrel speed and groove for the tip let's see Okay, here's the rack cleaned up. This slotted end right here goes to the front so that you can see it and you can pin the rack as you put it together. Okay, it goes in that hole right there. You want to be very gentle. These teeth face toward the outside of the pump. If you look, you can actually see it going through the lifters. Very gentle, do not force it.
Okay, see the rack there? See the groove? So as we put these in, these individual barrels, let me find my pin here. We will drop our pin. This normally has a plug in it. Make sure I'm clean here. You take that plug out, you drop this in. See as it rests on top, what you want it to do is to fall down in the rack and then pull back tight against it. So it's gotta be back solid against the pin. And in that position, whether the governor's on it and it's on a truck, or whether it's we got like we got it apart right now, that's where it has to be when you drop the pumps in. Okay, lifters are in, rack is in, rack is pinned, so we'll be ready to start putting the pumps in shortly. Something else very critical. This I call this a wedding band. That's just mechanics uh, uh, lingo for this is a spacer very critical it has to be clean free of debris not even a speck of grit between this the pump housing and the barrels this is a metal to metal seal if you get a piece of grit in here it will allow fuel to get into your oil okay so you know i've done cleaned i've done blew it out uh thoroughly this drops down in like so usually a little easier than that though there we go i like to even take and turn them lightly in the bore just to make sure i can't feel nothing in there gritty okay i have i have had these come back it is possible, no matter how good you are, it is still possible to get get something in there and, and uh, put fuel on your oil. So just be careful, but be aware it can happen. It's a, and nobody's perfect. So we put that in. Okay. Here's our new pump. This is brand new. What you want to do, you want to line this hole and this groove and this slot in the back side you want to align them with it aligned recheck your pin your rack should be pulled all the way back with the pin in the groove you take this double check for anything down in there it looks good and clean Slowly drop your pump in, not to disturb it. The location of everything. Okay, and it drops in. Now, if yours don't drop all the way in, it may be on the high lobe of the cam and you may have to roll this cam. That will not interfere with the rack, okay? Now, I will show you how to double check once I get the, the uh, bonnet seal and the new bonnet on it.